Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this series we're creating Spider-Man in Unity 2D. In this video we're adding movement to our enemies. Let's begin. So here's the scene so far. We have Spider-Man and a bunch of enemies. I can attack the air and nothing happens, or I can move close to an enemy and attack him. And as you can see, after three hits he dies, and when I hit him, there's a screen shake and some impact particles. So right now, as you can see, the enemies are simply static. They respond to hits, but never actually move. Let's make them move towards Spider-Man. So in order to do that, we need a reference for our target. Now, there are many ways to do this, but in order to keep things simple, let's make them only capable of attacking Spider-Man. Later on, we're going to refactor our code to be able to attack other entities as well. So let's head into the Spider-Man class, and in here, let's define a static instance. So do a public static Spider-Man, call it instance. And on awake, let's simply set the instance to this. Okay. So this gives us a globally available reference to our Spider-Man. Now let's head into our enemy class. In here, let's define a member variable for our target. So make a private Spider-Man target. And let's grab our target on the private void start and set the target to spiderman.instance. All right, so we now have our reference to Spider-Man. Let's test to make sure that our reference is correct. So simply make a private void update and on update, let's move him towards the target. So a vector three for the target there equals target.getPosition minus getPosition.normalized and so on. Move the transform.position plus equals target there times a move amount just to check if we are moving towards our Spider-Man. Okay, so let's run the code and see. And yep, as you can see, they are slightly moving towards Spider-Man, which means they are correctly accessing the correct reference. Okay, so now let's first go up here and define a constant for our speed. So in here, make a private const float for the speed and let's set it to 30F. And down here, let's use the speed to move. All right, there you go. They are now moving at a decent speed. So now let's go into our game handler and make sure we're only spawning one enemy just for testing. And there's a single enemy correctly moving towards Spider-Man. Okay, great. Now, as you can see, the enemy is moving, but not actually animating. Essentially, we have to do the same thing that we did for Spider-Man. So let's go into the enemy code. And in here, let's make a private void handle movement. This will be the function responsible for moving our character. Now inside, let's move him towards our target. But before we do that, let's define a minimum distance so we don't get to overlap our target. So make a float for the stop moving distance and let's set it for, let's say 30F. And in here, we're only if vector3.distance if the distance between this enemy and the target dot get position, if the distance between both of them is bigger than the stop moving distance, then we keep moving. If not, then we stop moving. So too close to target, stop. And here target is far away, move closer. Now, if we are too close, then we go into our enemy base and play the idle animation. If we are not too close, then we want to play the move animation. And again, let's grab the target direction and the move code. So in here, play the move animation towards the target direction. And on our update, let's call this function. All right. So on update, we are calling this function. We are testing for a stop moving distance. If the distance between this enemy and the target is bigger than stop moving distance, then we move closer. If not, we stop and we stay idle. When we are moving closer, simply calculate the direction to the target, move this transform towards him and play the move animation towards that target direction. Okay, let's see all that in action. Okay, there's the enemy and as you can see, he has stopped because he's within 30 and if I move and yep, he's moving closer and when he's within range, he simply stops and becomes idle. Yep, exactly. Now in here we have an issue much in the same that we had with our Spider-Man movement, which is if I attack him, you will see that the hit animation no longer plays. I hit him and yep, there you go. He was knocked back, but he did not play the hit animation. Again, this is the same thing that was happening with our Spider-Man on attack. 
That is because when we hit, he plays the hit animation, but the very next frame, he goes into the idle animation, so they are canceling each other. So let's go into our enemy class, and we're going to fix it much in the same way. Go down here, make a private enum for our state, and the possible states are either normal or busy. And store our current state, okay. Let's go down here, make some helper functions. So a private void set state normal, where we simply set the state equal state dot normal and do the same for the busy. Okay. Now on our awake, we start off as normal. And on the update, we do a switch on our current state. In case we are in state dot normal, then you do handle movement just as normal. In case we are on state.busy, do nothing. All right. So now all we need is to go down here on the damage. When we get hit, right here when we play the hit animation, we need to also set this to busy. So in here, simply do set state to busy. And when the animation is complete, instead of going back to idle, we're going to call the function to set the state back to normal. All right, so this way he should remain on the busy state while the hit animation is playing. When the hit animation finishes, he goes back to normal and he goes back to handling movement. So let's see if he does get hit, plays the animation and goes back to normal. Okay, there he is. If I move away, you can see that he is following me. Okay, great. Now if I hit him, yep, there you go. There's the animation and then he goes back to normal. And if I move him away, he, he is still following me. Okay, and I hit him again, now he's dead. All right, great. So again, let's just test with multiple enemies. Okay, so here I am and enemies are currently being spawned. I can hit him and kill them. And now that one is spawned. He's chasing me, hit him, kill him, hit him, kill him. And another one, boom, boom, boom. And yep, they keep spawning. They keep moving towards me and I keep killing them. All right, great. So there you have it. We added simple movement to our enemies. In the next video, we're going to add web zipping to our Spider-Man so he can move around very fast. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.